Before we get into everything for the episode, I have a question that I really want to know your answer to. If you were to wash your brain, would you use hot or cold water? Probably very cold water. I know, same. (laughs) I feel like it would just be like so refreshing. I feel like the hot water would not be helpful. I feel like it would just be like, it would hurt. But isn't that interesting of like when you really need to wash something good, do you use warm water or hot water? When you need to wash something good. Yeah. When you need to wash something well, you normally would use hot water like dishes or, yeah. yeah. I mean, I I don't think I'm going to get the opportunity to wash my brain. I it's just I would like question. a nice little cleanse though. That's what I'm saying. I feel a little, little nice. Little washy little wash, spritz. little yeah, a little suds. Yeah. Get in there and and just clear it out. Get a fresh little start, a little reboot. Yeah. How do you feel like you reboot your brain? Um, I don't know if I have. <laughs> <laughs> How do you reboot boot your brain? I would say by sleeping super well. Okay. And then probably taking some time away from stimulants, like yeah. taking time away from caffeine, being really specific with diet intake. I would say that that's probably like you do that for a week or two. That'd probably be like a brain reboot. I feel like going on vacation sometimes, depending on the type of vacation, can be a little bit of a brain reboot because you kind of just let it like just kind of slow down and then like wash out. And then you got to come back to reality. Right. And you get a considerable amount more of rest or should yeah. on vacation than what you would on a day-to-day basis. So I imagine that would be the brain reboot. So maybe we get two reboots a year. <laughs> maybe. I feel like you should get more than that. Yeah, I don't know. How many brain reboots? If you work really hard and you spend a lot of mental energy, how many brain reboots do you think you need a year? Well, how long does it take to reboot your brain? <laughs> Like if we're just talking like a weekend this versus is, this like is why a week. we This is why we struggle for these type of conversations. You need like hard and fast. No, I just, I can give you it's, a better answer. It's a, it's a theory. It's an idea. We're just trying to chip through ideas. And then okay. you have to have like hard, fast. These are truthful it's rules. Hard they don't fast. exist. You're not going to rinse your brain out. I'm just curious. I know, but I'm saying like if. If it if you think that like a reboot could be a weekend, then it's like you could theoretically have more reboots. I don't think a a full reboot is a weekend. I feel like okay, a full I reboot agree is a with week. That. I just wanted to see how you felt about it. I know it. I did kind of hop down your throat there. Yeah, I apologize. Geez. I was <laughs> like that hot water just pouring <laughs> over me. Sorry. Well, at least we have that answer now. If yeah. it were to ever come to fruition, we'd be voting for that cold water. Yeah. Well, I really want the topic to be about actually what the next 15 to 20 episodes are going to be about. Let's do it. Let's let's fill the people in. Let's dive in. What are we doing or what have we been working on? Oh my gosh. The most requested, the most um, desired, I think, series that we've ever done, but we ramped it up times 100. And <laughs> what this series is, it is the muscle series. We are educating very in, in great detail about every single muscle group. And what I mean by in great detail is that we're getting into the insertion and the origin of every muscle group. We're talking about the function of every muscle group. We're talking about the opportunity of what you're utilizing or how you're utilizing that muscle group in daily activities. What are the aesthetic benefits? How does it help you filling out your shirt? Does it help with your leggings? How does it make the complete look to your body happen? So many more things outside of that. What were other things that we talked about? We also dive into what our go-to exercises are that we use with clients, what common training mistakes are, or what we see within cueing the exercise. And we even give our own cues of how you can make sure that you get the most bang for your buck and just some things that we really enjoy about each muscle and being able to also answer questions. We gathered a lot of questions from you guys, from the podcast, from our Instagram of different things that you've asked for different muscle groups and went over those questions as well. Not only that, I mean, those episodes alone are what some people would be charging thousands of dollars for. Mm -hmm. We're giving it to you all for free. For free? On the podcast. (laughs) For free. Oh, wow. Now, the only charge that we're going to ask of you all is that you have to share it with at least one person. That's all that we ask of you is to share the episodes with someone that you love, that you know it is going to benefit them. Now, we're not only doing that. 
the next episode that you will get for every single muscle group is going to be an interview of myself and another expert in the space going over the specific muscle group for that week, um, giving a lot of tips on how they utilize it within their clients or what they've seen be successful for them. Some of the episodes we get into the research and talk about some of the intricacies that would be shown there. I mean, every episode is so action-packed there's been so much prep and so much work behind the scenes that have gone into every single freaking episode. Yes. A lot of that. <laughs> a lot of that for sure. That is going to be so helpful. Like I, I, one of our biggest missions is to be able to provide a resource and knowledge for everyone. And this is in perfect alignment with our mission in doing so, because this is going to be a wealth of knowledge. And I, I believe the way that we broke down every muscle group, every exercise, uh, broke down all the details. It is digestible to anyone, no matter where their level of training is at. If they're new to the gym, if they are an intermediate, even if they are advanced, I believe that these episodes are going to resonate a lot. So I'm tremendously excited for these to kick off. Yeah. And the guest list, we didn't even mention who is on the guest list mm -hmm. of who's coming on. We have some incredible people coming on that I'm so thankful for their time to coming on and lending their expertise. But we're kicking it off with Corey Hageman. You might also know her as Corey Fit on Instagram and talking about glutes as an IFBB bikini pro. She has a lot of knowledge about glutes. But we also have more guests coming on like Eugene Teo. We have Bryce Calvin. We have Aaron Straker. We have James Fryer. We have Chris Bearcat. We have Cody McBroom. Am I missing anyone? I think so, but I, I'm blanking on Dom potentially. Cusa? <laughs> Dom Cousa? Dom yes. yes. <laughs> we've, we, we've recorded these episodes over the last six months. Yes, yeah, so it has been a labor of love. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes. So this has been, yeah, over six months that we've been recording these episodes, getting everything set for it, while also keeping up with the normal episodes that come out on the podcast. So like you talked about of it has been a lot of work that has gone into it. So what has that looked like for you of being able to prepare for the episodes with you and I or being able to prepare for the guest episodes? What has that looked like on top of your normal workload throughout the week? So if you are a consistent physique development podcast listener, you know that we haven't done a whole lot of interviews. It's been episodes of Sue and I um, throughout the time of us just talking talking on topics and we would prepare by researching on the specific thing that we we're talking about. And so this was my first experience being able to prepare for interviews, which was daunting at the beginning. And you put me in places of being a little bit more anxious and nervous going into the interviews because I didn't know if I was really doing a great job or whatever the case may be. But how I went about it is that I would watch previous interviews for the people that we were interviewing to see kind of what questions they were getting. I didn't want to just replicate some of the questions that they received in other podcasts because I'm sure that if you guys are familiar with them, you've already heard those questions answered. And I wanted to be able to bring questions to you that were going to be brand spanking and new, things that you're going to be interested in hearing. And so I listened to a lot of interviews. And then I also did a lot of research on my end of going through uh, the anatomy, all the things that we did for the education series, but getting into greater trenches of what does that person's experience or expertise really dive into? Are they someone who works more with competitors? Are they someone who works more with uh, lifestyle clients or whatever the case may be? What is their content on social media? I did a lot of backend work to get myself prepared for these interviews. I'd often come up with 30 to 40 total questions that I felt would be beneficial for me to ask. And then I would try and trim it down to 20. And then I try to trim it down to like my best possible 10. And then that allowed for me to be in the best spot to get into these interviews. I thought they all went swimmingly well of being able to dig into the brains of each person that I had the opportunity to interview. And, um, I'm really excited about them. Yeah. Well, I can tell you from reviewing all the episodes that you did do a really great job. There were some that you would come out of it and be like, I don't know how that went. And I would be listening back to it and I'll be like, it went really freaking well is how it went. So I'm very excited for it to get into the hands of everyone else. And I, I still can't believe you said free, that we're giving this away <laughs> yeah. for free. All for free. Okay. Very, very interesting business decision, but I will trust you that we should do this for free for something that should be worth thousands, I I just, I'm still a little bit in shock there. It's hilarious because every interview has been like, you guys are, you guys are doing this for free. Like you guys are, you're not putting this behind a paywall. You're not opening a Patreon account. You're not starting a course with this information. You're just giving it away. And we're like, yeah. 
because this, I mean, it's in alignment with our mission. Yeah. And I do think that this is going to be a resource to help everyone. Mm -hmm. um, and as, as much as we could profit from creating a course or putting this behind a paywall, I think that it's going to, I, I believe a lot in putting good out and good comes back. And this is a lot of good going out. And, and I have a, a lot of faith in that. I agree with that. Now, when it came to picking the people, obviously, they have an incredible repertoire. I mean, incredible coaches across the board, some with some very special letters after their name, like a really, really great group of people that are experts in the field. How did you go about choosing who was going to be for different muscle groups? So this is a great question because we went through a lot of yes. <laughs> back and forth of creating list of, of possible guests and then being able to give reason to each of them. And then we were able to cross people off the list that didn't make sense after we you know went into greater detail. And so the, the thought that went into it was, what do I see if it was a coach? What do I see that their clients are improving in? Do I see that there's a consistency of this muscle group is getting better and better with all of their clients across the board? Do they have an expertise in that? Or are they making more content educating on this particular muscle group? Um, if they are someone who is utilizing social media as a platform to post their own progress, is this a muscle group that they have had a lot of experience with and growth, particularly with that? Um, those were you know two factors that I took into consideration, but also the rapport between myself and the coach was important to understand as well. The the relationship and being able to have great dialogue and, and be able to um, get into their brain was important to me. So I picked people who I was able to already have a base of connection with that we were able to expand upon that and get deeper into the weeds with all the things that we talked about. Mm -hmm. I also really appreciated that going into it, you would even have things that you knew you disagreed with this person on. And and I think that that like just creates very good debate and conversation. Like people are afraid to disagree with one another, but I think that that's where you find either common ground or you get to see something from a different point of view is really challenging those thoughts. Like if you just listen to people that agree with everything that you say, then you're going to be in that echo chamber. But if you push yourself of, hey, maybe I don't agree with them, but I'm either going to start the conversation and see their side to either be able to gain greater knowledge or greater insight on on why they think this way. So maybe that alters how I think about something. Yes, that was probably the biggest aspect. And I'm surprised it wasn't the first thing out of my mouth. <laughs> but again, we have been prepping these for a while. Yes. <laughs> and so I wanted to be able to have that differing viewpoint to potentially change my view or, or provide a different perspective for them to be able to showcase their thought process. And then also the same for me, like being able to go back and forth and have that dialogue. And also I want to be a, a a resource in which we are pushing that conversation forward. Like too much in social media, I feel as though that it's like, we think one way and then everyone around us needs to think the same way or you suck. It's like, we can all have differing views and be able to have conversation. Maybe we change that perspective. If not, that's okay too. Like we don't all have to agree on the same thing. And I found that to be really beneficial through the episodes. I also wanted to ask you if there's anything that you learned through the conversations with people, because that's something where I was thinking about this the other day of that you really only are... I'm trying to think of the correct way to say this, but I was thinking about the aspect of a lot of people are afraid to ask for help or to ask questions to other people. And I feel like that is the only way that you are completely stopping yourself from growing is being too afraid to ask a question or learn something from someone else in a way that can be vulnerable in a sense of like, if it's two experts talking about something and then you're like, oh, that's something new. I'm learning, that can even feel hard to admit or hard to acknowledge because it's this aspect of like, I'm supposed to know everything. And I think that you take a good attitude of, I don't know everything, but I'll figure it out or I'll ask the right person to figure it out. So I think that it's a good thing to know of like, is there something that you learned along the way uh, through the process? So at the time of recording this episode, the most recent interview that I had was with James Fryer and we go over everything. 
uh, pertaining to the core. I mean, we get into the nitty gritty when it comes to core. And so he was able to share a lot of things with me that expanded my knowledge specifically within pelvic floor and making sure of the our ways to go about strengthening the, the pelvic floor prior to pregnancy, during pregnancy, postpartum, um, uh, across the board, he was such a wealth of knowledge. So that's the first one that really jumps out at me. Um, and, and really just getting to hear some of the things that in my mind may not have worked from a program design perspective or exercise selection for particular muscle groups that other coaches came in and talked about those specific things being things that they kind of hung their hat on, things that had worked for them. And so that was also interesting. But I imagine that as I continue to review the episodes that I'm going to be like, yep, that was new. Or uh, we, I strengthened my perspective on this, changed my perspective on this thing. So I thought that that was really you know, beneficial. Mm-hmm. Uh, the James episode is going to be a good one. It's hard because I'm like, they're all going to be so good. Mm-hmm. Um, so I have to stop myself from not being like, that's going to be good because then I'll just say it about every one of them. Um, and even the one you did with Dom, that was the first episode on a podcast that he had done talking about training, which is insane to to think about because I'm like, that's exactly what I would think all the episodes would mainly be about. So I think Dom Kuza is one of the most hidden gems within Mm -hmm. the coaching or bodybuilding space. He is a wealth of, of knowledge. He has taught me a lot during our friendship of just going back and forth. He's a, a friend that I can send clients to and say, Hey, I'm, I'm feeling like I'm not seeing the result that I should be like, can you just take a look at their tracker and, and see if there's something that I am missing? Like, it's just that quality of a friend and also someone who he loves to teach. He does he love to loves teach. to teach. Oh my gosh. And the dude, and like I said, he's so, so freaking smart. smart. He's so smart. And, and so many of the, the coaches that you guys see do counseling of some sort or coaching with him. And, and he just brings such a expertise to the the table. Um, and, and he's, he's going to shake his head at this because he's much more than, than bodybuilding, but he's so skilled at getting people in shape, mm-hmm. getting clients in shape and, and having a replicable system of like male, female, any division, they're going to come in peeled. And that is a skill that is far harder than anyone realizes. Oh, it definitely is. But I do want to make a disclaimer. I know you already mentioned it, that this is for different fitness levels. But since we did mention that someone is an IFBB pro and then talking about bodybuilding with Dom, this is definitely, if you're like, oh, then maybe this series isn't for me because I'm not into bodybuilding. You do not need to be into bodybuilding to be into this series because this is really talking about how you can learn about the muscle to be able to perform better, period. Not if you're a bodybuilder, not if you're this category, it's period, because you're learning about the function of the muscle. And if you are a a regular listener, you hear us talk about learning the anatomy and understanding how the muscle works is only going to help you when it comes to training. Again, regardless of if you're like, well, I'm not a coach, I'm not trying to be this um, like expert in training and this expert in programming, You don't need to be, but you do need to understand what you're doing to some degree to be able to really get the most bang for your buck. And that's what we really go over in this is like, how do you get the most out of that muscle and how do you see what you want to see? I would expand on that and say, by understanding the anatomy, you can go into any gym setting and get yourself set up in an exercise or with a dumbbell or with a cable to potentially be able to train that muscle. You don't have to be like, well, this equipment is taken or this this piece, I, I don't know what to do. It's like, I understand the anatomy, so I just need to move in alignment with the insertion and the origin and how that function works. And this also applies for anyone who's training at home and has minimal equipment. You understand the anatomy, now you can get a little bit more strategic and creative with the exercises that you are putting into place. Low reps. Is best. High reps is best. Fruit is so it's good. It's terrible. You should you. lift heavy. High reps. Carbs are weight. needed. Keto squats are bad for your Squats knees. are great. You for should your squat ass to grass. Over toes. It's fine. It fits my macros. For idiots. When there are so many mixed messages going around, it's hard to know what you should even do or focus on. But that's exactly where physique development one on one coaching comes in. You might have heard of online coaching or even hired a coach before, but we believe in teaching you the why behind what we do while truly taking your life into consideration. We want to train train, educate, and empower you to reach your goals and help you to stop spinning your wheels and just finally feel good. And hey, we're here to help you look good too. 
You need you. Your health is your wealth. So join Physique Development and let us be the last coach you ever need. So with this muscle series going on, what does that mean for just the podcast in general moving forward? Is it just going to be the muscle series then just for the next few months? I think we'll have some other stuff going on. Okay. <laughs> okay, a little hint, hint, nudge, nudge. Do, I see do, what you're I doing. Mean, do you want to give them any insight on those other episodes? I, this is already this is already too much. I mean, it's <laughs> you guys You guys are getting so much information here. It's going to be amazing. Um, but do we want to even you know, tease the other stuff? We don't have to get into that right now, you know, giving them too much. I mean, if you follow along for our PD Digest, our newsletter, then you might be able to get a little bit more insight on that. But for starting off in July, which will you're listening to this um, on the last Monday of June, so next Monday, July 1st, that is when the Muscle Series starts, and it is going to be every Monday through October 28th, so it actually ends on my birthday. How special. Um, it's just all about me and my birthday. <laughs> uh, but there will be some other things coming along to be able to still hear us talking about different stuff and being able to have some more fun episodes. Episodes. I know everyone's really been enjoying the gym girl chats, which makes me so happy because I have loved just being able to talk to my friends and like multitask of like I'm podcasting, but I'm also getting to catch up with my friends. So there will be more of that. Uh, we're just going to get the muscle series rolling and then we'll get into the rest of it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, one thing I realized that we didn't mention with the muscle series is more free stuff we're giving away. Oh my gosh, really? More free stuff? Yeah. Okay. We're giving away a freebie of a cheat sheet mm. for each muscle group if you listen to the episode. Yeah. So if you are someone like myself who is more of a visual learner or likes to be able to have even just like words in front of them instead of just auditory, then this is going to be a dime for you. Because you will have basically the outline of the information that we talk about in a very easy to digest like sheet, just a one cheat sheet that you'll be good to go. Mm -hmm. And actually, just a fun fact, if you have a PDF that you have like on your phone and you open, you can save it to your book app on your phone. So if you have an iPhone, I don't know what it is for other phones, I'm sorry, but if you have an iPhone, the book app should already be like on your phone. And I actually do that with training programs is whenever you send over my training programs, I save the PDF to the book app on my phone so I don't have to go look through screenshots or anything like that. So this will be a PDF one sheet. So instead of screenshotting it, which you also can't get the hyperlinks if you screenshot it, you can save it to the book, be able to still hit all the hyperlinks, get access to everything. Because on top of the cheat sheet, there's also a playlist for each muscle group with the exercises we're talking about going over exactly how to perform those exercises. It's a gem, dude. So, I mean, win, win, win. <laughs> yeah, super win. Yeah. <laughs> but I just realized we forgot to talk about that. Do we Do we want to set up? I, I'm just wanting to give away more. <laughs> Let's just keep it rolling. Um, is there a way, like, how can we track if people are to share the episode? Uh there's not a super duper easy way to track that, uh, to my knowledge, at this time, unless people end up sending in, quote, proof. So it would have to be something of like sending a screenshot or making sure that they tag us if they do share it with someone, something to that matter, which if someone is going the extra mile to share it or doing the one thing that we do ask that they do for all this free information, then taking a screenshot of like, let's say you send in a text to a friend and you're like, hey, you got to check out this series, taking that screenshot and emailing it to us, then we'll really make sure that we get it. But I'm like, figuring this out live on the spot because you're here. just asking yeah. me this. So like when it comes to link tracking, there's not really a great way to do it as far as each person that would be listening to this podcast. So it would really have to be on someone being able to send a screenshot to us to an email to make sure we all had it in one spot. Yeah, I think that if if we have, we, we set it up in a way that you have like one entry for this thing and then two entries for a, you know, going the extra mile. Like if you send a text, you get one entry. And then if you send a, you post it on your story, then you get two entries. And then at the end of the month, we'll figure out what we're giving away. Oh, and do it each month. And do it every month. That's a little fun. We could probably, instead of them sending it to an email, we could probably do something where it's like a, you know, like Google Forms, how you can attach a picture to it, that we could do it that way. I feel like that's too much of an oh, exercise. 
much that. too much? Yeah. Okay. I thought it might be easier. You feel like that's going to be easy to get into Google I, Forms? I think that we have a very skewed understanding of easy because we live on Google Drive and that is just not the, I, I can't believe that some people fill out their check-in on their phone. No, they don't. Yeah. I promise. <sighs> God. Puke. That sounds puke, horrible. Puke, puke, puke. Get on your laptop. I, at that's least, a big at least screen an activity. That is a big screen activity. Yes. I mean, I, we're, we're about to pivot into a really important topic after just talking about really important things. Speaking of what I'm meaning is that I was it's, like about big screen activity. <laughs> yeah. Small screen and big screen activities. There's a distinct difference. And too yes. many people are using just small screens to do everything. Yeah. When people say they like watch YouTube from their phone. I'm like, that's a big screen activity, at least an iPad. There are so few things that are small screen activities. Yeah. Instagram is like one. Instagram. Wordle. Wordle. <laughs> um, crossword puzzles. <laughs> Twitter. Twitter. Twitter is a great small screen activity. Texting barely fits this. Yeah, barely. Barely. And honestly, just take texting off of every list. <laughs> <laughs> Texting's just not even an activity I want to oh be gosh. a part of. So what are small screen activities? We've, we've said three or four. Do you have any other small screen activities? Taking a picture on my phone. Yes, I'll take that. Yeah. That's about it. Yeah. But literally, I would say a large- Shopping, part- big, big screen activity. Yes. Like I do not, I hate, unless, unless it's something like Sephora or Ulta where it's like in the app and it's easy to go in and like I've already figured stuff out. But even then I'll like add it to my cart on my phone and then like go to my computer to make sure I have everything set. But it's like any time, what am I supposed to scroll and then click? And oh my God, that gives me like a headache and anxiety at the same time thinking about it. <laughs> Trying to like see all my options in front of me and compare stuff. That's just, no. Yeah, shopping is not for, I mean, almost everything is a big screen activity I will for me. say one small screen activity using shift. Okay. That's a small screen activity. Well, I have a beautiful wife who does that for yeah, me. So do I, I don't even have wife. a, a uh, vote on that one. Yeah. But YouTube is a, at bare minimum activity. iPad activity yeah. into big screen activity. Yeah. And I mean, this iPad has 1 million percent been worth the price. I, I use it every single day mm-hmm. for the things that are not small screen activities. They're this screen activities, <laughs> this mid screen situation, because it's the iPad mini. So it's not ginormous. And I just watch like it mainly is a TV for me. I'm watching YouTube and Peacock, and that's about it. If you're watching YouTube on your phone, you're creating, you're, <laughs> you're, you're committing good. a horrible sin. <laughs> <laughs> and Netflix on your phone, can you fathom? <laughs> I mean, maybe on a treadmill. Yeah. Like you're on a run or something. Maybe. An iPad's still better. Yeah. I just, I, maybe it's just because I don't like using my phone, period. I despise my phone, yes. I'm just kind of like, whatever. Without <laughs> that, that'd be great. All right, back to the Complete muscle series. Tangent, but very important. <laughs> and I'm going to be putting a poll up to vote on that. But Yeah, back to the muscle series. Do we have anything else to share with them? Um, what was maybe one of your favorite moments from the muscle series? Favorite moments? I was just happy to get to talk to everybody. I know that that's a cop out. Cop out. But <laughs> truthfully, I was excited to get into every conversation and getting to see some people who I've only had, you know, uh, DM exchanges with. I hadn't gotten to really talk to. I know some of the episodes are in person, which is amazing. And that was even better. Uh, some of them were. Um, oh, that was, I was like, was how many were? And then I looked down and I was like, oh, yeah, there was uh, three, I think, that were in person. I think even more than, I think there may have been four. But anyway, there were some that were over Zoom and then some were in person, which were great. Uh, I think that there are going to be things that certainly surprise the listeners of of what's been successful for some and, and the conversations that we had. I know that we're kicking it off with Corey's episode talking about glutes. And so one thing that we spent a good bit of time on was the sets per week conversation of how frequently we should be training glutes, how much we should be hitting each and every day or, or sessions that we have, how many sessions can we hit in a week's time frame and still see adequate recovery and growth. Um, I think that's going to be really insightful for people. And we get into the details of what some individuals have recommended more publicly and, and maybe why that is a good idea or why it's not a good idea. And so it's going to be a, a wealth of knowledge. Are you sick and tired of your glutes not growing? 
turning around in the mirror and seeing a board for a booty. I've been coaching for nearly a decade, helping thousands of women reach their goals. The most common goal, grow my glutes. Women in their 30s, 40s, 50s, and even 60s, able to grow their glutes with the guidance of my training programs. And for all this time, I've kept my best glute growth secrets only for my one-on-one clients. And that changes today. We just released our 12-week glute growth program in the PD training app. It is a four-day program with exercise and volume adjustments every three weeks. You can easily access the program through our app and track every single workout. Each exercise will have a detailed video teaching you exactly how to perform each and every movement. And guess what? I am no longer gatekeeping. I'm sharing every single one of my best glute growth secrets inside this program because you are awesome and I want you to have this program. I'm going to give you $25 off, making it a fraction of what you spent at Starbucks this past month. Use code POD. The link to purchase will be in the description. Now let's get back to the show. And I know we talked a little bit about what it looked like to prepare for all of this in the background while doing everything else. Is there anything else like just to to note on that of like within trying to balance of like this is the priority and we're working on this of what that looked like for like how you even had to shift around different priorities or your schedule? Uh, my schedule was crazy over the last, I mean, both of our schedules have yeah. been crazy over the last six to seven months. And it was just a matter of, prioritization of being able to take hour blocks or two hour blocks sporadically throughout my week to be able to spend time in the preparation. That's how I accomplish really anything at this point is that I get very overwhelmed by looking at just projects and I get, I have to look at things in a way that I'm just breaking them down into bite-sized pieces. And then I'm taking that bite-sized piece and breaking it down even further until it just feels comfortable for me. And so I did that with every single episode and especially for the very first one that I did. Now it was the very first episode was with Dom. So I had a little bit of an easier time with the preparation for that one because of the people that I talked to, I would say that he's the best friend mm-hmm. that I have of the group. And he drove from Michigan drove from for Michigan. the day just to record the podcast, which was awesome. So shout out to Dom. Yeah, shout out to Dom. So And shout out to James because he drew, drove from Cincinnati to Columbus with his new baby. And just that was a lot to do uh, <laughs> just for the podcast to then go drive back home. So extremely appreciative. Yes. What were we talking about? We were talking about Dom and doing that episode in person. Oh, yes. The preparation part of it. So with the preparation, those first episodes, I was breaking it down into like 30 minute to 60 minute pockets of that was how I could focus and it felt comfortable to me. And then as I got deeper into it, felt more comfortable with it. I was spending two hour blocks and I was generally spending between four and six hours a week on just the preparation for the interviews, not including the preparation for the education podcast. And so- And not including actually recording the podcast. Correct. Yes. It was a very large time commitment for me. So from a week to week standpoint, I was spending eight to 10 hours solely on the podcast in preparation for the interviews, our education, and then also the other episodes that we were recording along the way. And you were so helpful in doing the gym girl chats. Mm -hmm. And I know that all the listeners have thoroughly enjoyed those episodes, which is great. Um, But it was a lot added to both of our plates. um, And alongside client check-ins, as you guys can all imagine, the amount of talking that I'm doing (laughs) on a day-to-day, week-to-week basis is a a lot. lot. (laughs) And so managing my voice was probably one of the more challenging things. There was a lot of days throughout the last six months that I lost my voice midday. And it was like, well, I have to relax and rest because I can't answer check-ins, but I guess I could still do some of the prep work. So I would do that. Um, And as we got into the later months and I was able, better able to manage it, my voice stuck around for more days. (laughs) So that's good. That is good. It was a lot within organizing the different guests because like getting guests on a podcast of getting everyone's schedule and different time zones, making sure technology works. So we even had to re-record some episodes after doing them to make sure that they were the highest quality for you guys because there were some with some dropped audio or a few uh, dropped video. And even though we know a majority of people are just listening 
listening and not watching. We wanted this to be the best. And that also means that, of course, Alex deserves his flowers for everything he put into it. I deserve my flowers for organizing so much and keeping track of everything. But I cannot go through this episode without giving our team their flowers because this has been a team project. Yes, Alex and I are very front facing. And yes, we are doing the work for the notes and getting everything set. But to actually have the production of the podcast, we definitely could not do it without David, who is our podcast producer. And we love you so much, David. We could not do it without Miguel, who is here in person with us uh, doing all of the video, making sure everything's all set with that. Uh, We could not do it without Cash, who helps a lot with our short form. And he has been an absolute beast just making sure everything is set for that. And we could not do it without Tiffany, who is working on our email list. We couldn't do it without Kat, who is working on our social media posts and making sure everything's set for that. Couldn't do it without Rachel and Mary, who have been a huge help with getting everything connected for Alex and I. There has just been so many hands in on this that I am so incredibly thankful and grateful because they deserve massive flowers as well because there have been there still is so many moving parts to this to really make this what we wanted. And with that, I think it's worth noting of we have not been creating YouTube videos. And we made that decision when we decided to go all in on the muscle series that is launching next week, if you didn't know, July 1st. Uh, But we realized that bandwidth-wise, between everyone working on the muscle series, that we wouldn't be able to do what we wanted to do with it. And we had to make a really hard decision. We haven't talked about it publicly, even on the podcast, of we decided to stop uploading videos to YouTube. Now, we do still have the podcast videos that are going up for those who watch those, but we stopped making specific content for YouTube to be able to have the bandwidth of the team to really propel this whole thing forward um, and to get things going to where they need to go. So it has been a huge project. Uh, It has been a lot of moving parts, a lot to manage and to make sure everyone is on the same page and just could not do it without everyone involved. It would not come all together. So extremely, extremely thankful for everyone on the team. So shout out. I probably the best decision that we made was not doing the YouTube videos. I, yes. <laughs> I, if I was to look at it now and you know, think about Miguel having to edit YouTube videos alongside everything that we've done over the last six months, and then also us planning the YouTube videos. Oh my gosh. We would, we would all lose our terrible. minds. It would have been terrible. It would have not, it, would, it wouldn't have worked. Yeah. It would have been impossible. So um, we made great decisions yeah, in just focusing on this. And it's, you know, it was a massive team effort. It's going to continue to be a team effort to get everything situated as it becomes live. Um, but I'm really proud of it. Yeah, I'm extremely proud of the project and of everyone that worked on it because it just feels really good to have everyone bought into doing something. And especially again with having the guests on and now making sure all the guests have, okay, what date is it going live? Do you have all the information for what it is? Here's short form content for it and getting all of that just together. Um, It's been a lot, but it's something that I am very proud of. And especially looking back at the first time we did the muscle series, that this feels like a completely different thing altogether. Yeah. Very much so. <laughs> yeah. It's not going to you know, hold a candle to what we were doing here yeah. the first time that we did it. It's not even going to be close. We just said, let's go all in on it and exactly. let's, let's make it happen. Yep. So if that didn't sell you enough to at least share it with a friend, then <laughs> I don't know what will. But I hope that you enjoy the series. Is there anything else you want to tell people either about the series or fill them in on anything? Tell a fun fact. I don't know. Tell a fun fact. I don't know. I mean, my brain's already like shifting to the next project. Oh, good. <laughs> Us. Here we go. <laughs> I got ideas, baby. Oh, I got goodness. ideas. No, thank you. Um, well, yeah, I'll, I'll give us a little bit of buffer time, but I've got ideas. Okay. And then for the giveaway situation, are we just going to say to, we'll have we'll have the actual of what to do in the show notes. Okay. Just so that if we do change what happens, that it's in the show notes. So check the show notes for how to win something that we'll figure out with I was thinking sharing. like a $100 Amazon card. We can do that. Like, like a $100 Amazon gift card. Would you guys rather have a $100 Legion gift card 
Yeah. Would you rather have like a hundred dollar revive gift card? Yeah. There's actually now, if you are on Spotify, it's not on Apple, but if you're on Spotify, if you are on the episode and you scroll down, there should be a question box. So if you have something specific that you would want to win, um, then let us know and we'll figure out maybe a glute program for some people. We, we'll sounds, figure it out. Yeah, Maybe we do more than one winner every month. Yeah. <laughs> there's mean, so much to do. Depending on submissions, that's yeah. really what it's going to be about. Yeah. So right. we'll figure it out. We'll let you guys know. Uh, but thank you guys so much for all of your support thus far. Make sure that you share this whole series with a friend or a few hundred friends. Uh, <laughs> and we would very much so welcome your feedback on everything as well, um, just because there are so many moving parts and we love to hear what you have to say. So thanks for joining us. We'll catch you next week, July 1st, for the first episode of the Muscle Series. See you guys there. See you then. <laughs>